What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day And don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com Get yourself some MIDI drums, get yourself some Trap Chords for Scalar Volume 1 Get yourself Trap Chords Volume 2 with the MPC files Get yourself some samples and do not forget to stop by Spotify Follow the Spicy Sundays podcast for the most hilarious commentary on the so-called producer community. Now, today we're going to be looking at something that doesn't apply to FL. It doesn't apply to Ableton Live. It only applies to the boomers. That's right. We're going to be working inside of the MPC software. Um, and what I want to show you guys is a super basic beginner video. Um, and it's about uh, sample management and arranging um, and loading your samples uh, because again this software is not easy when you first look at it right so in order to if you if you uh, if you got an MPC right and the first thing that you did was added added outside storage or you're thinking about adding outside storage let's talk about that first right I see uh, a tendency for a lot of folks when they come into the MPC community um, from you know from from regular doll world is they, they get the MPC and they're like this can take a this this could take a hard drive I want to put a seven gigabyte hard drive drive in my MPC. And my question to you is why? Um why would you do that? Stop it. Get some help. The MPC experience is one of imposing limitations onto yourself, right? You're playing your drum patterns by hand, you're chopping samples without the safety net of something like Serato sample. Um, you know, you're introducing a level of complexity into your workflow that wasn't normally there in the pursuit of either being more tactile, um, having more fun or challenging your own skill level as a musician musician um and in in the pursuit of doing that one of the things one of the things that is very important is to refine your taste and your decision making skills and what i mean by that is you don't want to add every last drum sample and every last loop that you have in your library to your mpc expanded memory um one because when you're browsing using only a scroll wheel uh going through all of those samples is not fun it's not a mouse it's a scroll wheel you have to turn it over and over and over again if you go through a bazillion folders um that you know that you don't use you know that you don't use those. So my suggestion for anybody who didn't get offended um, would be that you curate this and you practice that aspect of production, which is arguably the most important part of production. Real production is curating the sound, making sure that you've got the right sounds and samples first, not just loading you know loading this machine up with everything that's on your computer and hoping that one day you accidentally pick the right kick because it's not that deep now as far as using this as far as using this without the controller um in order to in order to browse your hard drive right i think i, I think when you open it up the standard loadout is going to bring you to the akai packs right you don't want to do that you want to go to the bottom right corner and you want to hit this uh file browser the hot key is f um and what that's going to do is it's going to bring you it, it's these folders are these folders are very important let's touch on these right so what this is going to do is it's going to bring you to a predetermined screen i forget what the default loadout is um what MPC has done is they is they've given us these these five hotkeys, which we can set to navigate to our five favorite folders. So the way that I personally approach this right is I have I use the MPC with the software. Um, the reason why I do this is because it's easier if I want to find if I want to 
I, I like I I work as this as if I'm working in standalone when I'm using the NPC software. I'm not using it as a plugin necessarily inside the DAW. Like I'm doing as much as I possibly can inside the NPC software, but I'm just using the controller. This is on in the background just in case I get stuck and I want to you know uh, use mixed in key or if I want to you know um do you know do do time stretch that doesn't sound like booty you know and i can use the elastic pro instead of instead of the pro 10 which is terrible it's awful nobody likes the way that sounds um so the point is the point is um what was the point <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> shortcuts on the folders right so um what what Akai has done is they've they've given us these five favorite folders and the way that you the way that you select them is whatever is on this screen um if you press if if you hold down shift and click this folder then anytime anytime you come back to the software it'll go directly to this folder so what i do is i have my two favorite drum folders uh of the moment right so i've got the oz secret bounce volume one kit which that's what i'll use for like trap and drill vibes okay and then i have the beat but the beat butcher filth uh, volume one kit and that's what i'll use for you know like griselda spooky type beats right and typically like it, you, and and this will change you know if i get if i get a new kit that i like or if i want to go back to you know something like snare jordan volume three which is a kit that i know very well you know i can i can go and change that um folder three um this is this is my drum folder right so if i don't want to use one of these two kits i will go to i'll go to folder three which will give me like the rest of my drill kits and you know um everything else that's in my uh <laughs> that's that's in my npc loadout and you see you guys see I've only got but 20 folders here i don't have every single drum folder that is on my regular drive i curated this for what i'm going to work on on this machine right it makes the workflow so much faster folder four this is where this is where all my samples are so i have like some pre-made chops that i did in serato sample um that i could load up at any time i got stuff from you know uh youtube digging i've got i've got you know all the sample packs all the sample packs that i've made um i've got um you know different different designers that I like to use from drum broker um so on and so forth I mean I even I even got old school um uh god why can't I think of bro's name anymore whatever you guys you guys know what that shit is um and then and then on five a five is just like a five is just like the actual drive but I'll show you what I mean like if I wanted to if I wanted to if I wanted five to represent this drum midi um folder I just double click on it, hold down the shift key and then select five. And now it'll go to the drum MIDI folder, All right? So I want this to go to this drive. So that's so that's important because this will this will make your life. This will make your life so much easier because going back, going back to the volumes inside of inside of this, it's it, it's an it's annoying, man. It's it, it's not the best browser uh, for using a mouse. I mean, you gotta go here, and it's just no, you don't want to do that. So when it comes to when it comes to actually actually loading these samples inside of inside of the um, the software, it's super easy. Um, if you're using if you're using a, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing your sample first, so we can go ahead and. A couple things about the browser. If you don't want it to auto play, just click this off, right? If you do want it to auto play, you're going to have that. And you got to double click stop to stop it because it's going to play it's going to play the whole song but if you want to load a you know if you want to load a um a sample all you have to do is click and drag it 
um, over the pad. You see, this is this is a zero one. So these these um, these numbers co uh, correspond with the pads on the controller. If you don't have the controller, this is the pad on Group A on the bottom left hand corner of the grid. So this and then this moves to the right. That that's how the pads are set up. So you got one, two, three, four. Simple stuff. Um, so this would be this would be your track for your um, for your sample. If you were interested, you know, if you were interested in going in here, I'm gonna do another tutorial on chopping samples without without the uh, without the controller, so you guys can so you guys can kind of get a feel for for that workflow, um, which is which is pretty cool. But you'll have all this you have all this available to you. You go to the next track, right? Go back to your main screen and select select a new a new drum program right so you've got your sample on program one program two we can go ahead and add drums and it's again super simple you just go to you just go to your favorite folder get you a clap click this up arrow to go back here's a hi-hat up arrow to go back up Here's a kick. Up arrow to go back up. Grab you a snare. And then now you can go ahead and program freely. I'm just pressing, I'm just pressing control D, uh, I'm just pressing control D to duplicate these things, All right? You can hold it down and it'll ring out. Whoa. That's not what we wanted to do. Sound like we're making Craig, da <laughs> Craig David type beats. Yo. And that's and that's how easy it is to you know manage your samples and load your samples again. Um, my personal loadout for using the browser is my two favorite drum kits, uh, d separated by the two genres that I'm currently working in. So, uh, folder three is going to be my main drum folder in case I get frustrated and I need to go to a specific sound. Folder four is going to be where my samples are located on my MPC drive, and folder five is going to be the overview of my MPC drive. So if I need to go into programs or projects, I can get to them quickly. So this is CMP with Craftmaster Production studio12tutorials.com you guys keep it simple but don't be basic and we will see you on the next one fam peace